Hi everybody, welcome to today's edition of the CrossFit Games Update Show. I'm Sean Woodland with Tommy Marquez and Pat Sherwood. The day after 16.2, first time we've ever been in a garage. It was a great show, a great atmosphere, and a lot of fun to watch. I really enjoyed it. I mean, as somebody that loves the garage gym, you've got two of the best in the world, number three and four, coming to your hometown, into your garage, throwing down, and obviously they put the word out at the very end because there was a nice little yeah. gathering. I mean. A very cool environment. Mm -hmm. That was so cool. By the end, it looked like he had a little block party mm -hmm. only with the third and fourth fittest men on the planet. That was awesome. Yeah, and I just hope the neighbors were cool about it. And no authorities. <laughs> How were, could they not? No be? Dan's got the baby notified. blue eyes. Come on. <laughs> it was Dan Bailey versus Bjorgen Carl Gumanson last night in a garage in Candler, North Carolina. Both men came out of the gates looking pretty good. Dan Bailey opened up a little bit of a lead, but it was Dan Bailey who went on to get the victory. He finished. The workout in 19 minutes, 49 seconds, got through all seven cleans at 3.15. Bjorgen Gumason was just two reps back, but afterwards it was determined that Dan Bailey only did eight of the nine squat cleans at 275 pounds. On the game site, there was a statement that was put out. I'll read that for you now. Dan Bailey completed only eight of the nine required squat cleans at 275 pounds. He and his appointed judge both miscounted the score in the fourth round before Dan went on to complete the remaining reps at 1949. Because of the judging error, Dan's score has been withheld from the leaderboard at his request. Now, we don't know if there's going to be a penalty, if they're just going to dock him one rep and then say he got 429. We don't know what the result of that is yet. But that does not take away from the fact that Dan Bailey put on a heck of a show last night in 16.2. It, it just showed that he's the capacity's there. Mm -hmm. He's worked his butt off. 2016 looks fabulous for him. I'm curious to see, yes, how it will shake out, redo penalty, not sure. But what it opened my eyes to was, I thought finishing this workout would be out of a lot of people's mm -hmm. reach. Now there's going to be more people finishing yeah. it than I gave credit for. Yeah, and, and Dan still did such a tremendous job. And I actually te texted this to him last night that all scoring errors format aside, that was still one of the most impressive performances I've ever seen from him and one of the most impressive live performances given the circumstances, period, that we've seen at these open announcements. And he still did 429 reps. Mm -hmm. You know, format aside, that's still one more than right. Bjorkman, and he still played to the crowd. He still he, he still felt the energy and stepped up his game. And you talk about a 20-minute workout, right? With all of those reps for mm -hmm. Dan to do that well, uh, that that this is a new Dan Bailey that it. we're seeing. And when you look at Bjorkman, Carl Gumanson, what we're seeing from him is just a man who is reinforcing why he was third at the CrossFit Games in 2015. I'm a Goodmanson fan. I learned my lesson mm -hmm. from last year. What do we know? To stand on the podium, you don't necessarily need to win anything, but you have to do everything. So this is the guy that took first place in Murph, mm -hmm. very long, very light, and now shows up on 16.2, works his way up to a 315-pound clean, is just two reps shy of finishing it. Keep your eye on this yeah. kid. And most impressively, the composure he showed. Dan came out to a very, very fast pace and put a pretty good distance between him and Bjorgman. And Bjorgman, you know what he did? He stuck to his game plan, mm -hmm. kept his toes yep. bar consistent, very calm, composed face. And you know what? He still performed well. So we saw two of the world's best do 16.2 last night. Who are some other athletes on the men's side who are going to do well at this workout? My very easy pick, low-hanging fruit, Josh mm -hmm. Bridges. Your overall leader after 16.1, I think he's going to do very well on 16.2, put himself in contention to maybe win the Open. My dark horse, though, Nathan Bramblett. So this kid was a rookie last year, went to the games where he took 27th, but he showed up to the games, his wife had had a baby on the Sunday before, he slept just a handful of hours, had a significant foot injury, so on no sleep with an injured foot, he took 27th yeah. as a rookie. You just fall on, on social media, he just hang power clean 350 pounds, <laughs> and he's now under the tutelage of seven times games athlete Chris Spieler. So watch Nathan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, last night on the show, I mentioned Nick Yeranker, but a guy that when I went back and looked at it stood out to me, and that's Paul Tremblay. This guy is strong. If you remember the team yeah. series last year, we had the seven rep max front squat where you had to pull the bar from the floor. He hit 370 for seven. That'll Ooh. do. Just cleaning 370 just is impressive, stop. but then squatting it six <laughs> times, just... this guy has some serious leg strength for those cleans, but he also has some capacity mm -hmm. too that he showed up, did really well in 16.1, and, and he has the record for the beef test, which is an on-the-minute workout of seven pull-ups, seven mm -hmm. thrusters, seven burpees, and he did that for 27 minutes. This guy's got some gas tank now, and he's got some strength. Yeah. Expect him to be at the top of the leaderboard. How about the women's side? Women, I'm gonna go with Lil Fish, right. Lauren Fisher. She went to the games 
on a team, but in 2014 showed up as an individual, broke into the top 10, took ninth place. We didn't get to see her in 2015 return. She took 12th at regionals because she sprained her ankle uh, on a rope climb, but she's very strong. I talked to her this morning. She's not so much worried about the toes to bar. She thinks it comes down to the squat cleans and her best triple is 225 pounds. Wow. Final female bar is 205. Mm -hmm. I think Lauren's gonna be all right. Uh, my pick is a girl that we've seen some very impressive performances mm -hmm. from on social media lately, and that's Brooke Wells. She has a 270 pound clean. That's the biggest post to clean I've seen from any games athlete. But really this is an opportunity for her to show some maturity as an athlete with the toes to bar and the uh, double unders where she can kind of manage her, her pace, manage her gymnastics and show some improved skill in those areas in particular because we know she's going to wipe through the 270. barbell. 270. 270. That's why it's my goal just to be a strong female crossfitter. I got, I have no problem Amen with that. Amen to that. You know, I'm, both, would, I'm absolutely proud of that. Well, Dan Bailey and Bjorn Carl Gumanson weren't the only two people going head-to-head -head last night. We had round two of Roe versus Boz. And for the second straight week, it's Adrian Bosman coming out with a win. We don't have the official score, but Bosman got more reps of 225 than Roe did. And when this workout was first announced, I thought, okay, Roe has a chance to even it up. But man, Bosman is just relentless. Oh man, it does not look good for, for Roe. Yeah. And, and he showed a glimmer of hope after the round at 185. He finished the, the 13 cleans there ahead of Adrian and got back to the bar. But when the camera moved over to the side, you saw Roe just doing these sloppy <laughs> singles on toes de barn. You kind of knew he mm -hmm. was done. And even this morning, a picture that was posted by one of our friends on social media of the crew in the Atlanta airport and Roe was laying <laughs> on the floor, passed out the joints. in the clean living, <laughs> yeah, in, the, in the clothes that he wore the night before mm -hmm. for the workout. It's just, it's a, he's in a tough spot yeah. right now. Bosman is playing fired up mm -hmm. ball right now. He knows he's got uh, Rory against the ropes. I think he can take advantage of that. Like I said, I don't know if he'll sweep everything, but he's setting himself up very well. Roe better be praying to the 16.3 mm -hmm. gods that something yeah. good comes his way because he needs it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's going to do it for us for today. Remember, if you want some tips on how to do better at 16.2, if you're scaled or if you're doing it at RX, go to the game site. We have some tips from Nicole Carroll, our director of training and certification, and Leah Pulaski, one of our level one trainers out there for the scale division. So you want to check those out. For Tommy Marquez and Pat Sherwood, I'm Sean Woodland. Good luck with 16.2.